a year and a half ago. Um, I started to investigate together with my colleague from Michigan, Maria Aquero, to think about lithium. Um, but lithium in this context, not as a mineral that is only mined somewhere in the rest of the world, but lithium as one of the major drivers of the currently occurring energy transition. So we were very fascinated about the global footprint of lithium and the, let's say, disconnect between us as consumers and the places where lithium actually comes from. And we started the collaboration with a colleague um, uh, at PUC in Chile, where a lot of these lithium mine sites are located. What we discovered during our first semester of research, and we tried to really untangle this, is the flow of lithium as a mineral from mining to distribution and processing, manufacturing, consumption and recycling, how it's impacting our global urban environment. We can follow where the minerals go and how much is consumed and how it's causing uh, urbanization across the globe. And this was our approach to map it and to trace it and to analyze it, to understand how much energy is actually consumed just to bring the lithium to the processing and distribution sites and to the places where the batteries are built, to the places where they are consumed again. I mean, this footprint is tremendous. I looked at this in my last semester seminar and it ties very nicely back to a book that I'm working on, which is called On Urban Typologies. And we are looking at these infrastructures that emerge with the energy transition. So among them solar and wind plants, but also charging stations, manufacturing plants, uh, recycling stations, mining sites specifically as well. When we are implementing these infrastructures now, we need to make sure that they are not only serving one program, that they are actually trying to be multifunctional and that they are trying to fix a lot of the other urban challenges that we are facing. So green infrastructure, but also social infrastructure. So what can be coupled with EV charging station? If you have an EV, you're sitting there for an hour and you don't want to sit on a parking lot. So what are all the other services that we can combine with EV charging? And where should these chargers be in the first place? Maybe already where we have these community centers and social infrastructures. So it's really about understanding these infrastructures not as monofunctional infrastructures, but as integrated and multifunctional infrastructures and to help this energy transition to allow us to build better cities and communities in the first place.